I think this may be the first video of the FXR actually idling by itself. What's up guys, Lego here with Dyna Demos, finally bringing you episode four of the FXR series. The reason it's taken so long is I made a few mistakes along the way and I also learned some lessons. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned. And if you guys happen to like the video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is where my last video left off. And if you guys happen to watch episode three, you guys will know that my bike completely died when I was at uh, Sunset Cliffs and my buddy came and gave me a new battery and then my bike started. So I thought the problem ended there, although it did not. So what I was thinking is, you know what? It's just a dead battery, bike's been sitting a long time. So I got a new battery, everything was going good. I went and rode my bike again, got stranded at a coffee shop. I was super pissed and I was just like, man, my battery's dead again. So obviously I was like, you know what? I need to look into the charging system. And that's where, that's what I'm gonna talk about now. All right guys, so this is my 87 FXR. And if you're not familiar with FXRs, the charging system is relatively simple. So you got the battery underneath the seat. I'm not gonna remove my seat cause that's just gonna be too much work. Uh, in here, you got the stator, which produces power, uh, but the bike's got to be on and it's got to be running for it to produce power. And then you got the regulator, this guy. And if you guys happen to look at this, you'll see it's by Cycle Electronics. It's brand new. And that's basically the charging system. So it's relatively simple. Um, but I did not I did not look into it when I should have, and I just assumed it was the battery, although it was not the battery. So what I had to do was I had to go out, I had to buy a meter, I watched a couple of YouTube videos and basically I was an expert at troubleshooting the charging system. So I don't wanna lie to you guys and tell you I'm some great uh, electrician or anything like that. All I did was watch the YouTube videos and then I troubleshot it down. So I will talk about basically how I did it and how I came to the conclusion that the regulator was bad and I'll talk about some of the other components and uh, what they do in the system, just so you guys are a little bit more familiar with it. So underneath the seat, like I said, you have the battery. So what I had to do on the battery was I had to make sure that it had the correct voltage. And I don't remember off the top of my head what the voltage was, but the battery itself was good. So after that, what I had to check was the stator. So I had to turn the bike on and then I had to unplug the wires here from the regulator and I had to make sure that the stator was actually producing electricity and it was it was producing AC uh, volts and it was producing the right amount and it wasn't grounded out or anything like that so after I came to the conclusion that the stator and the battery itself was good the only thing possible was the regulator so I didn't even check the regulator but uh, after troubleshooting those two things, confidently say that the regulator was bad. And so since the regulator wasn't working, it wasn't actually recharging the battery. Now, once I got the Cycle Electrics regulator and I installed it, uh, my battery was charging and everything was good and I haven't had an issue with the charging system since. So the only thing I replaced was the regulator itself i did not replace the stator here's a bad one i was waiting to throw it away until i could show you guys may need to hit them up nah just kidding i don't even care so once i took care of the charging situation uh i realized that my bike was still running like crap it just wouldn't idle good so i looked into the video that i watched in order to adjust my carb and i realized that there was more to the video that I didn't actually watch. So I'm not gonna talk about, or I'm not going to explain to you how to tune a carb and lie to you like I'm some super expert on it. But basically there were some steps that I didn't follow that I should have. What I actually had done was I just tuned my carb so the bike would start. And then I needed to ride it. And then I needed to come back and adjust it again 
uh, to get the proper settings for the bike itself so it would run, not just start. So don't make that mistake. Watch the entire video that SNS provides if you have a Super E carb and you won't run into the same issue I did. But now that's all taken care of, like I proved at the beginning of the video, my bike is now idling. Okay, the final mistake that I'm gonna talk about are these handlebars and I'm really not proud of it and I can't believe that I'm even showing you guys, but I'm just gonna do it. I went with the Thrashen six and a half inch pullback risers. I love these things. They're freaking chromed out. They are beautiful and best of all, they're made in America. Then I went with their mid bed and bars and they actually just came out with an aggressive bend mid bend bar and I'm super upset that I got these. These are more like relaxed comfort, but whatever. I already had them mounted, so I wasn't gonna redo those. Uh, I also went with uh, just some regular uh, grips. Um, they're the Colt grips and they're super comfortable. They got like the Vans um, pattern on it super sticky love those things i also got some chromed out mirrors and my gauges are up here but i just want to show you guys something quick so you guys already know the issue i'm turning my key on i'm going to turn the power on what's that i have no freaking power so the mistake that i made is i am not an electrician and i suck and all the wires I connected, I didn't do a very good job. And the only thing that actually works is the starter and the ignition system because none of the lights work at all. Uh, so yeah, there lies my issue. I'm not proud of it, but I'll show you guys the handlebar so you guys can see what my bike looks like and what I'm going for. So it looks pretty good. Obviously, all these wires are gonna get cleaned up. And if you guys are wondering what this is, so the old style gauges, they actually have a flex cable that runs all the way down here to uh, right behind your front rotor. It mounts the flex cable and that's how your speedometer works on these old style bikes. It's not electronic, old school. Um, and then if you guys are wondering what these ugly things are, these were the front turn signals and I'm getting rid of these. I just need to go to the hardware store and get shorter bolts. So don't worry, these aren't staying on. I know they're freaking ugly. But that's what I'm going for. So there it is. Now you guys know my big secret. I messed up the handlebars. I suck at wiring. I'm not proud of it. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I'm kind of ashamed <laughs> and a little bit embarrassed, but I hit up a Temecula Speed Shop. Uh, if you guys just search that on Instagram and I'll put his uh, handle down here, you guys can see that, hit him up. He said that he can make me an entire new harness, so that's the route that I'm going. I'm not even lying, I'm gonna have somebody else work on my bike for the first time ever besides changing tires. I'm gonna have somebody else do some maintenance for me because I hit up probably close to 10 shops and he's the only one that responded quickly that they could do it. Everybody else was like, nah, man, I don't want to touch FXR wiring. So you know what? I felt a little bit better that it's not such a uh, common thing to be good at. A lot of people don't like messing with wiring. Uh, so shout out to that dude. If he's able to do it, I'd be super stoked. I'm taking my bike there next Tuesday. So that's gonna be the end of the video, guys. I know I talked about a lot of mistakes that I made, but uh, with all those mistakes, I learned a lot of lessons so please in the comments uh you guys honestly you guys can beat me up i don't care i always talk shit back to you guys so uh feel free but don't don't get mad when uh i talk shit back to you all right uh but please in the comments let me know some of the state mistakes you guys have made on your own bikes and if you got fxrs please let me know the mistakes and if you made some of the same mistakes as me please let me know because uh we can just both laugh about them uh, but I've learned a lot of lessons with all of those and hopefully uh, this bike after I get it back from Temecula Speed Shop is going to be better than new. Uh, I'm super stoked about that but honestly it's still rideable so uh, I'm still having fun with it you know but it's not really street legal right now so don't tell anybody.
All right, guys, so I'm gonna wrap up this video now. I just feel like I'm rambling on. Please stay tuned for the fifth episode in the series, and that's just gonna depend on how quickly I get the bike back. But uh, hopefully it'll be better than new, and uh, I'm just gonna be able to ride it after that because I'm tired of fixing this thing. Uh, but if you guys happen to like the video, please make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm gonna wrap this thing up with a walk around just so you guys can see all the progress uh, on stuff that I've done. So stay tuned.